What are you saying guys? Welcome back to my channel! It is the end of the month again. Is it just me or has this one gone really really quick? So we are doing a little end of month reflection and we're going to be prepping for July. Jesus, July you know? Do you know how mad that is? They ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't get into it because I keep, a uh, side note, sorry, already on a side note, but I keep talking about like, oh, when summer comes, when summer comes, or because summer is coming. No, 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 summer is not coming. Summer is here, we're in it right now. This is crazy, I can't believe. June is, June is done. I mean, it's not done when I'm filming this, but it's gonna be done by the time you're seeing it. Um, anyway, so, today I believe is the 25th of June, um, when you're watching this, so it is time for us to look back at June, prep for July. I have actually prepped some new journal questions for today because I said in my last one, if you if you didn't see um, last month's reflection video, I said I'm gonna switch up the questions now month to month. So I've generated some new ones to just get us thinking about different things. Grab your notebook, grab your pen, pencil, write it in your phone, write it on your laptop, however you wanna do this. Here we go. I hope you enjoyed this one and let's roll the intro. Mwah! I'm just gonna say if I seem hot and bothered and sweaty and glowy it's because I am it's so hot <laughs> I've just had to turn off my fan and turn on the huge ass softbox right behind you um so if I do start like getting an extra glow coming along over the course of this video it's not intentional but we're gonna pretend like it is let's get straight into the questions so I've got them written on my phone so we're just gonna go through them one by one so I'm just going to write the title, June Reflection. Also very off topic, but um, I just got back from Starbucks and I was supposed to drink this um, while I filmed this video. That was the plan. I was like, mm, I'll do my journaling, sip on my Starbucks, like it will just feel nice. But I got stuck in traffic on the way home, so this happened. So I'm going to enjoy my final two sips with you here. This time I'm not going to start with talking you through a gratitude or affirmation practice. Um, if you want to see how uh, I do gratitude practice and affirmations if you're new to that, then check out any of my previous journal with me's. Um, I kind of talk you through it, but I don't want to keep doing that every month just because it's going to get repetitive for the people that already know how to do that and have already seen the previous month's video. If you would like to, then you can pause the video now and write out your gratitude list and your affirmations. Or if not, you can just carry on watching and we'll just start going through the monthly questions. So, here we go. Okay, the first question is, what lessons did you learn this month? I'm just going to write that out. Okay. Oof, I'm, I'll be totally real with you guys. June, June was actually a very difficult month for me. I've been struggling the last few weeks, so uh, this one I think is going to feel a little bit different for me compared to how I've reflected on the, the past few months. So anyway, going back to the question, what lessons did I learn? Okay, so if you don't know already, I love lists. I love making lists. I love getting organised. When I have stuff to do, the first thing I do that makes me feel calm is I write it into a list and when it when it's all out of my head and onto the paper it already feels so much better. But I think my problem is I will write down every single task no matter how small or how big, which I don't think there's anything wrong with, but I've also realised some tasks that I don't get ticked off my list and they roll over to the next day, some of them can be really really small tasks and they can take me five minutes to complete and it would be so much better if instead of just writing out that list I just did the things that came to my mind straight away which I know are going to be quick to execute so for example I got a parking ticket <laughs> the other day and that's been on my list to pay for a week 
a good week, I would say. Every day it's been on the list and it's like, damn, I didn't do that, I didn't do that. Or you know when you're like, oh, I need to order another eyelash glue or whatever it is. And I'll write it down. But in the time it took me to write that down, I could just do it. Like paying a parking ticket takes five minutes. Buying your eyelash glue from Amazon or whatever takes five minutes. A lesson I have learnt this month, because this month I've had so many things on my plate, like so many things to do, so many things to like just tick off that just need doing. And a lot of them have been relatively quick tasks. And I think I've ended up making myself overwhelmed by seeing how long my list is of things I have to do. When really, instead of sitting there looking at the list, trying to strategize, if I had just started working on them, I could have relieved a lot of my stress there and then. So um, it does actually, I saw a quote about this not long ago, which said, if a task is gonna take you less than five minutes to complete, do it right now. And it's, it's so true. And I'm definitely guilty of that one, but I feel like I felt that. I already knew it and I knew it was something that, you know, I did that I probably should handle differently. But I feel like I really experienced it as a lesson this month. Like I, I realized I, sh I should have just done that. I should have just done that. I need to stop going on my phone straight away when I wake up. So my alarm goes off from my phone, which is on my bedside table. Once I've woken up, turned off my alarm, the first thing I do when I'm half asleep is I go on my phone and it's been on Do Not Disturb and I just check the notifications I've missed. Then I go on my Insta, my TikTok, and I just check my notifications. And this is when I'm half asleep, like I'm not even fully present yet. And it's the first thing I do. And there have been a couple of instances, I'm not gonna specify what, but there have been a couple of examples this month where I've woken up, I've checked my notifications and I've seen something which has started my day off on such a bad note. It will be either a message or actually in both instances, I think there were messages and they overwhelmed me, they stressed me out or they upset me, regard like just depending on what it was. And I remember seeing it and thinking, this was a really, really bad thing to see when I first woke up. And I don't think I realized the impact that can make on my day until recently. Those two examples really showed me how it set such a negative tone for my day and I just couldn't shake my negative mood. And I know I've said previously in my how to be that girl, that guy video, your morning dictates your day. And off the back of that, when you first wake up, the first things you do, like immediately, like the beginning of your morning, is so, so, so important too. And I think in, I need to figure out a way that I'm actually gonna do this. Like, because instinctively I'm like, what have I missed? Is there any like, like messages or is there anything I need to be caught up to speed on? Like, you know, like it, it, it's natural, even just like checking my WhatsApp or something, but I don't really wanna do that. I don't know logistically how I'm gonna do it. I think I need to get up, brush my teeth, wash my face, go shower and then check my notifications. But I don't, I don't know, I'm being completely honest with you, I don't know how I'll do that. I feel like that's a big um, task for me, but it's one to keep in mind and it is definitely a lesson that I've learned because I felt the negative effects of when I do it badly. Okay, question number two. What challenges did you face this month? Oh, so many. There were a few examples this month where I found it <clears throat> very difficult to control my emotions and as much as I hate to admit it, uh, I will say my emotions 100% controlled me on a few occasions this month and that isn't common for me and it's not something that I normally um, struggle with on a regular basis. And I don't know why, I don't know what happened this month. Maybe it's because I feel more overwhelmed than usual and I feel under more stress than usual. And also, not that I'm blaming on this because I'm taking full responsibility for my behaviour, but I'm not gonna lie, my hormones have felt quite insane this month. No idea why, but they have felt quite, like there have been a few instances where I've been like, ooh. Devi, why is that making you emotional? Or <laughs> why are you reacting like that? And I don't know, that's not, that's not very normal for me. So 
I am going to keep in mind that that may be a factor, but nonetheless, I need to have the ability to con control my emotions. Yeah, that's that was definitely a challenge and, and once I've let it happen and I'm in a really, really, really dark headspace, I'm aware of it. I feel like I don't help myself. Like I know in that moment, the things I need to do are, I should probably do some kind of physical exercise. I should probably go outside, like get some fresh air, something like that. I should probably meditate or journal or write a gratitude list, something to try and help pull myself out of that place. But when I'm in that place and it's so intense, I just don't help myself. I don't want to do it. I just don't want to do it. And um, it ends up just taking control of my day and it's just not good. It's really not good. And like I said, that just doesn't happen to me often, but it happened at least twice this month. Um, maybe, actually, no, I think I think probably a couple more times than that. Um, so yeah, that was definitely a challenge. Another one. Um, I have definitely been struggling recently with balancing different aspects of, of my life. So mainly, work, family and rest. I would say they've been like the main, the main areas of my life I've been focusing on or having to put attention towards this month and I've really really found it difficult to balance them because there have been more family events and things happening in my family in general over the last few weeks compared to usual that area of my life has been more demanding time-wise. And don't get me wrong, it has been so amazing and I love it, I love it. Like, it's, there's been so much family time recently and it's honestly just made me feel so good, but that's besides the point. Because it has taken up more of my time, my balance feels a bit off in terms of my work time and my rest time, just because that area of my life has been more demanding, which happens, like, it goes through waves. But I have just felt I've, I've, I've felt the impact of the way that it's thrown me off balance a little bit. And I've, I've been really trying to keep the balance and when I feel like it's not balanced, I get stressed and I get overwhelmed and it's not good and then it affects my mental and yeah, it just kind of throws everything off when I lose my balance. And I think that's been a continuous struggle for the last few weeks has been just trying to maintain that balance. So that's definitely another challenge. Number three is, what stress or concern worked itself out? I saw this question online and I really, really liked it. I think that is such a valuable thing to reflect on, especially if you are an overthinker, um, you're a warrior, anything like that. I think highlighting something that partially disturbed your peace when you were thinking about it ahead of time Reflecting on how it wasn't worthy of your worry or your overthinking is something that could be so valuable. So I think this is a really good question. Let me write it out actually <laughs> to start. Also, I think when we worry about something happening or whatever it is, we think about it so much. And then if it is an example, which most of the time it is, where everything works out fine and it ends up being like, oh, I probably didn't need to worry about it or think about it as much as I did. I feel like once it's sorted, a lot of the time we don't think about it again. We we leave it, we discard it, it doesn't take up any more space in our minds and we move on to whatever else. And we don't stop and think, you know what, I should learn from this example that in future I shouldn't let something consume my mental energy so much in such a negative way because look this is yet another example of how it sorted itself out or it wasn't worthy of my thought processes and I think that is something so key to reflect on and learn from so I know that this month I did a lot of overthinking and a lot of worrying so I have a lot of examples to choose from not ones that I'm gonna share because they're like about my personal life and people in my life but I have a few to pick from. But there is one, can I describe it without describing it? Um, there was one thing I had with a friend where I was, it was like this thing that was looming over me that I was worried about something. 
And then when it when it came to it, like literally it was the biggest anticlimax ever. Like it, there was no reason for me to stress about it, no reason for me to worry whatsoever. Like everything was fine and it was always gonna be fine. I just built something up in my head and the idea of this thing had just made me uncomfortable. But it's just me and it was just in my head. It wasn't in my friend's head and it wasn't the actual circumstance. I had built it up so much in my mind. And yeah, it worked itself out without, like, it wasn't even something to be worked out, but it just, it was such an anticlimax in the best way. This one, I think you should take some time and think about it. Um, I think this one really makes you think, like it really makes you think. So take your time and have a little think, see if you can come up with something. Okay, number four. What areas of your life did you grow the most in? I think this is this is really nice because it acknowledges that we do grow a lot of the time without even realizing that we are improving as a person in different areas of our life. And I think this kind of just gives it a bit of airtime. And I think that's important. So, some examples of areas of your life: relationships, habits, routines, self-compassion, self-care. That's just an example, it can be like anything, but um, for me, I would say relationships, but specifically family relationships. Like like I mentioned, um, it's been a very like family dominated time for me at the moment with the wedding coming up next week. Not my wedding, if you're new here, by the way, my cousin's wedding, let's not, pff, let's not jump the gun there. <laughs> And there have just been more things like, you know how like weddings just bring everyone together. And although like I am already very close with my family and everyone that's involved in this wedding, like they are all like my closest people. We've spent so much more time together and it's like this one thing has kind of brought us all together even more. And it's been so nice and I just feel like, I feel like my relationship, my one on one relationship with different people in my family has grown and um significantly too and it's been really really nice really nice so i would say relationships because i feel like that's been the focus family relationships has been the focus of a lot of my time recently and it has been such a positive experience and i do think i do think there there's been a lot of growth there okay number five what is next what did you do right or wrong this month <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna think of one thing I did right and one thing I did wrong. Okay, let's start, let's start with what I did right. <laughs> let's start with that. I would say I've been feeling a lot lately like I need a rest, like a significant rest. I think I did a good job this month of allowing myself that time. My life is very quick paced and I love it like that and I'm used to that but I've been feeling, I would say, emotionally and mentally that I've needed to just slow down a bit. And ordinarily, I wouldn't let myself do that. I definitely think one thing I did right this month was I allowed myself rest. And I tried not to criticise myself for it. Like, not, you know, properly criticise myself, but I tried not to feel guilty. That's probably a better way. I knew there was a reason why I was feeling like this. So I needed the time and I took it. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a big deal. It's definitely a big deal. Okay, what did I do wrong? <laughs> I know I already mentioned it, but it's because it, it did play like a, a fair part of my month. I would say something I did wrong this month was allowing my emotions to control me to the amount that they did. Like disrupting my plans for the day and letting it affect other aspects of my life that it doesn't relate to. Three moments you're grateful for this past month. This is nice, okay. First up, I'm gonna say yesterday, actually yesterday evening. So as you guys know, my brother travels a lot for work and he's back at the moment for like a good few weeks, like it's a good chunk of time. And yesterday we spent the evening together, just me and him, and we haven't done something just me and him in so long. I can't tell you the last time we did something like that. Like I would actually say, it might be last year, it genuinely might be last year that we did, oh no, it definitely will be last year, yeah, that we last did something, just me and him, and it was so nice, it was so nice. We went to go see um, Hans Zimmer at the O2, he's a musical composer by the way, if you didn't know. I think I mentioned it in my last video, so I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna go into it too much, but 
iconic music pieces, iconic in the film world. And it was honestly incredible. We went for dinner and uh, it was just, yeah, it was such a nice evening and 100% I'm grateful for that because I miss him so much when he's not here and it's not often we get a chance to it's not often we get a chance to do things like that. So yeah, that was really nice. Okay, the next moment is last week or the week before, I can't remember, but it was when the, the heat wave was heat waving towards the start of it. Um, I had had a not so great day and I just felt like I needed to check out. Like I think I was meant to film that day or I was meant to do something and I was like, no, you know what? I need some time to re-energize, recharge, and just work on raising my vibration because it just felt so low in, the, in that moment. So I went to a local park and I took my book, I took a blanket, I took my hay fever meds, <laughs> and I went and I sat there for a good few hours and I was like laying down on the grass and reading my book and listening to music and it was so therapeutic, it felt so good. And yes, my hay fever killed me off, but it was so, so nice. I think I actually mentioned this in one of my recent videos. It, it was so simple, but so needed. It was such a beautiful afternoon and it just completely turned my day around. But yeah, it was a very, very beautiful moment. So that's gonna be number two. Okay, and number three is gonna be um, the eve. It's not, I can't really like specifically pick one, but in the evenings, my mum and I, like we have like a little, it's like a little routine. <laughs> in the evenings we like, put Love Island on or before Love Island started we would watch something else like a film or we put on a series or whatever and we just chill out we have a snack it's so nice to have those moments and I think because we do it so regularly it's easy to just kind of not take it for granted but just overlook it a little bit I think that will be my third one what are you most looking forward to this month first up I'm gonna say rest because July, I feel, will be a month that can be about me and primarily I feel like I need rest. <sighs> Where I go like 50 miles an hour, like no, 100 miles an hour, let's up it, um, like 24 seven without even realizing. I feel like I can keep up at that pace, but no one can. So I'm looking forward to slowing down. Another thing I'm looking forward to, this is gonna sound sad, but I'm looking forward to rediscovering my happiness this month. I feel like I've lost it over the last few weeks and I've really struggled um, emotionally and mentally. I think they, they kind of go hand in hand though. And I'm looking forward to prioritizing whatever I need to, to just find my, my genuine happiness again. Because up until really recently, I was the happiest I've ever been. I would say I probably still am, but this is a blip. It's just, it's a little hiccup, that's it. But this period of my life is, is the happiest I've ever been. And I'm so grateful for that. And I think I just need to, I need to do things and be around the people that are gonna remind me of that. And I need to just like go heavy on the gratitude practice and just go heavy on the self care and remind myself of everything I have and everything I am so blessed with and everything I love and everyone I love and all the blessings that are existing in my life to rediscover my happiness. To quote the famous quote, happiness is where you are or nowhere at all. So I'm not going to be doing new things to try and change my situation to be happy. I'm going to look at my current situation and, and highlight the reasons I already have to be happy. But I'm looking forward to dedicating a lot of time and energy to doing that because I just haven't been feeling great and and I, I need to start feeling great again. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that journey with myself. Okay, next question is, how can you be kinder to yourself this month? This is another question I saw and thought this is so beautiful. Like this is such a beautiful question. And again, I think it gets us thinking about things we ordinarily wouldn't, like our minds wouldn't naturally go that way to think, mm hmm, how can I be kinder to myself? Okay, um, I think because I'm because I'm in a place I can acknowledge that I'm 
in a place where I need to slow down. That's difficult for me, firstly. That's, that's hard in itself, but I know I need it. So I think making sure that I am patient with myself. I'm not just talking about work. I'm talking about any responsibilities, anything, socialising, whatever. Just, if I think I need to do nothing, I'm gonna be kind to myself about the fact I feel like I need to do nothing and should do nothing instead of being impatient with myself and frustrated. I think I would easily get frustrated at myself, like, I haven't done anything all day. I haven't done anything productive all day. But sometimes being unproductive is productive and I'm gonna allow myself to be in that kind of mindset. I think this is definitely a big area where I can and should be nicer to myself. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, two more questions. Next one is, three goals you're setting for the new month. Okay. To do gratitude practice every day because I have fallen off a little bit with that. And I think that that can help a lot with raising my vibration and getting that back up to where I want it to be. Another one, obviously tying into everything I've said already, unapologetically giving myself the time and space to do whatever I need to, to ensure my peace and my happiness. So yeah, to just do whatever that means in the moment. Like what I've said before, like loads of people have said before, if it means letting someone down, let them down. If it means not showing up, don't show up. To be present and not worry <laughs> about things too far ahead because I think I've been doing that a bit more recently and take one thing at a time and just enjoy the moment I'm in in that moment I like that and final question what do you want to let go of this month there's a lot for me that I want to let go of this month um overthinking unhappiness stress burnout high expectations they're just coming <laughs> they're just coming to me perfectionism self-pressure and overwhelming emotions because there's been a lot of that this month too okay you go ahead and write yours for that and then we are done with this month's journaling thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed i hope you got to think about some things you ordinarily wouldn't and i hope you feel positive and ready for July and if you don't then this is your little motivational message you've got this this month is yours you're going to become better you're going to grow you're going to you're going to blossom you're going to have blessings happiness peace love everything you need that's what you're going to get this month and you're going to make it happen for yourself I love you so much stay safe stay smiling stay positive get ready for the wedding content because that is coming up I believe next Sunday don't hold me to that, but I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy. I love you guys so much. Have an incredible July, and I will see you next week. Bye, guys.